Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my work in this very nice uh, conference. Um, today, I'm going to talk about transport properties and new emergent phases in the cube rates from a theorist pr perspective. Okay? Uh, so first, let me acknowledge my collaborators. So uh, this work was done by Van Wilde, who was my former um, PhD student. Now he's a postdoc at Unicampi. Uh, also Catherine Pepin from CEA, CEA Saclay and Thomas and Xavier. Okay, so I will start from the charge order evidence in the cube rates, and I'll mention here this NMR experiments in 2011, where they observed a field-induced charge order phase in this region of the phase diagram of YBCO. Um, this is a long-range order, static order, and this was very interesting because it they really established the existence of this charge order phase inside the superconducting dome. Um, and uh, later on, uh, there were some resonant X-ray experiments where they measured this charge density wave uh, phase above TC with no magnetic field. And uh, this was very interesting. And uh, these are checkerboard um, uh, charge density wave uh, order, and, uh, and it follows this line here. And in the, in the beginning, they thought that this could be the heating order in the pseudo-gap phase, but that was not the case. You see here that the T CDW is different from T star here. So this charge order phase emerges inside the pseudo-gap phase. Okay, so also, STM and X-ray experiments established that this charge order phase has a D-wave symmetry, similar to the superconducting order parameter, and it's modulated by um, uh, this wave vector here, which connects the so-called hotspots, which are the uh, tips of the Fermi arcs. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, so this is the universal phase diagram. So the diagram uh, became a little bit more complicated because it gained a new uh, competing phase here. So we have antiferromagnetic, moderate insulating phase. We had a pseudo gap phase here, uh, which onsets a T star here. And it pot potentially this T star uh, crosses the superconducting dome and ends up at the quantum critical point at T equals to zero. Um, we have, of course, this very enigmatic. Um, uh, non fermi liquid strange metal phase here, which occupies a very large uh, region of the phase diagram, and at, at very high uh, doping when recovers from a liquid regime. Okay. Uh, also, another piece of, uh, an another very puzzling piece of evidence um, uh, regards this time reversal symmetry breaking, which was. Uh, provided by these two experiments here, both polarized neutral scattering by the group of Philip Bush and curl rotation experiment by the group of Kaptulnik. And they, what they measured, this is their data here, uh, they measured a evidence of time reversal symmetry breaking uh, at temperatures which are very close to the pseudo gap uh, temperature. Okay, this is very puzzling. Here is the region uh, of the experimental evidence of a short a short range D wave charge density wave. You can see here there is a dip in the superconducting dome, which suggests that the charge order phase competes with superconductivity. Uh, yeah, okay. So a minimum model that describes to some extent this um, uh, you know this time reversal symmetry breaking evidence is this uh, three band Emery model, which uh, which was proposed by this uh, four guys here, and uh, this is the model. I won't go much into detail about that. Um, okay, when you solve this model, one can show that there is a ground state 
uh, where there is a, a charge flow around this triangular paquettes. And this is called the theta 2 loop current order. And this state breaks C4 symmetry, so it's a pneumatic state, and it breaks also time reversal symmetry breaking. It breaks also parity, but it does not break chirality. Okay, this is very, um, you know, suggestive, uh, but of course there are some problems with this uh, phase because it doesn't, this phase does not open the pseudo gap and, uh, in the antinoidal directions. So, yeah. So we still don't know what's the origin of the pseudo gap. So since I'm a theorist, I, I'm going to show you a model that we used. So we start from this um, Emery model and we write down an effective uh, model. Uh, so uh, we restrict to the low energy band and these so-called hotspots, which are the most important contribution from this model. So the hotspots are the intersection here of the underlying Fermi surface with the antiferromagnetic zone boundary. Okay, so this is a very, we can write down the, the action of this model. Uh, we have three, uh, uh, you know, fermionic fields here, and this is the uh, order parameter field, which describes uh, the exchange of spin fluctuations in the model. And if you want to know uh, more detail about this uh, work. I mentioned here our published uh, papers. And we did both a mean, th uh, mean field theory calculation uh, and also an RG theory to examine the fluctuations effects. Okay, so um, one very important message that I want to leave here is the following. There is this so-called uh, uh, pseudo uh, SU2 pseudospin symmetry in this model. This is an emergent symmetry. And this symmetry relates this charge order phase which exists in the model uh, to a yet another phase called per density wave order. Okay, this is a bit formal. I won't go into detail about that. So we could, we, uh, we could derive a phase diagram um, in this model. And as you can see here, this is the other parameter here. So this is charge density wave, and this R2 is related to the theta2 loop current. And as the interaction of the model uh, grows, you can see that the, this loop current order phase um, you know, starts from zero here, then it grows to finite values, and it precedes the formation of the charge order phase here. So there is a range of parameters where we see a coexistence of this charge order phase inside the loop current phase. Okay, so due to this emergent SU2 pseudospin symmetry, um, a pair density wave, actually a checkerboard pair density wave, should also be visible in these materials. Okay, so what is a pair density wave order? Uh, so this pair density wave order refers to a superconducting order with a finite Cooper pair center of mass momentum. Okay, so the, the, uh, the uh, pairs are formed, uh, for instance, K, uh, upspin uh, with K plus QX uh, downspin, for instance, or this possibility here. So it's a checkerboard pair density wave, um, and this uh, should, of course, be visible in these uh, materials. And this landed on the real axis um, with this experimental discovery by the group of Shimos Davis uh, and collaborators where, where they detected uh, this Cooper pair uh, density wave in this material here, so it's BISCO2212. And this was very exciting because they were able to map out the, uh, you know, the, the Cooper pair density. And by Fourier transforming this, they could show that this pair density wave is indeed a uh, checkerboard pair density wave. And uh, moreover, the modulation of the pair density wave is actually it, it's given by the, the wave vectors that connect the so-called hotspots, which, were, which was exactly our prediction in this uh, hotspot model. And, uh, yeah, and they cited a work here in the abstract, and this was very exciting. Okay, so then the phase diagram of the cupris became enriched. Now it gained a new phase. So 
besides the charge order phase, we have now a pair density wave. So the story gets a little, a little bit more complicated. Um, OK. Um, and this is the so-called bidirectional pair density wave slash charge uh, order phase composite order. Uh, but we can go further and ask, um, how can we understand these transport coefficients from this very um, same model, so the hotspot model? Can we push this model to try to understand also transport? And that's what we are going to do right now. Uh, transport is, of course, very tricky and very difficult. Usually, it's the first thing that the experimentalists measure, and it's the last thing that the theorists understand. So it's a very complicated uh, property because it's out of equilibrium property. Uh, OK, so we, we are going to try to do this. But first, there is a problem. The strange matter phase is a non-fermi liquid phase. So we cannot rely on quantum Boltzmann equation to calculate transport properties of non-fermi liquid phase because it potentially fails uh, since there are no lambda quasi particles at low energy. Uh, so we are going to use a different approach called the memory matrix formalism. And this uh, method does not rely on the existence of, um, of uh, well-defined lambda quasi-particles. And uh, that's the advantage of this approach. So I'll just sketch here the strategy of this approach. So uh, only the operators with the longest relaxation time scales that actually have a finite overlap with the currents of interest will contribute to the connectivity of the systems. And the operators with short time decay are irrelevant in the low energy effective description. And as you are going to see, the memory matrix is a generalization of the concept of the scattering rate in Boltzmann theory, but it's applicable to strongly correlated system in which this quantity is ill-defined. OK, so this is the model uh, that we use. So it's the hotspot model. Um, uh, the psi here are the fermionic fields, the phi is the um, composite um, spin fluctuation fields, um, and here the lambda is the spin fermion coupling here, um, and I'll, I'll go to uh, explain this a little bit more uh, in detail. Okay, so the spin fermion coupling here, uh, they couple to these uh, they, they couple efficiently to these hotspots here, uh, which are this intersection with the antiferromagnetic zone boundary. But we include a, yet another interaction, which is this composite operator. And this composite operator, it couples the spin fluctuations to the entire Fermi surface. So this is a higher order contribution to the system. So it, in, it involves two spin fluctuations. Uh, OK, so uh, we are going to use this uh, we are going to use the perform a perturbative calculation, and we are going to use this RG program. Actually, this, this justifies our calculation, uh, which was uh, put forward by Sir and Lee. And, um, and what they found is um, they found a non-trivial uh, fixed point in this RG calculation, which is different from the Gaussian uh, fixed point, and it's also different from the Wilson-Fisher fixed point. And it's completely controlled in uh, spatial dimensions d equals to 3 minus epsilon. So in the limit of small epsilon, this is fully controlled. OK, so this, is this uh, fixed point will justify our calculation. So uh, we need some kind of relaxation mechanism for the momentum uh, in the system. So we are going to introduce two types of weak disorder in the model. So one couples to the fermionic fields, um, and the other one couples to the bosonic fields. And they should satis satisfy this averaging relations here. OK, uh, so this slide is a bit technical. Uh, uh, please bear with me here. Uh, so we define a matrix of generalized connectivities here. Uh, this chi is the static retarded susceptibility of some slowly varying operators. This n here is a time reversal symmetry breaking that arises due to application of magnetic field. For b equals to zero, this matrix vanishes. Uh, the matrix of susceptibility is defined like this here. And from this expression, uh, we can calculate everything. We can calculate electric 
conductivity, thermal conductivity, thermal electric conductivity, so on and so forth. And the, matri uh, the memory matrix is given by this expression here, which looks a little bit complicated. Um, uh, this L here is the super uh, operator, which is the Liu view operator, which gives the time evolution of these um, operators here. H is the Hamiltonian, and Q is a projection operator that projects onto space, which is perpendicular to, to the slowly varying operator. So you don't have to uh, care too much about that. Um, uh, the main message that I want to leave here is the following. So the memory matrix encodes the mechanism of relaxation of all the almost conserved operators in the system, and due to this projection operator, this is the exact expression here. And it, of course, we are going to calculate perturbatively, uh, but this is exact. Uh, okay, some results for the transport coefficients. So we can use this Nieder's theorem to show that at the classical level, the operators with the longest time scales are the total momentum and the current operator. Actually, we are going to assume that the only almost conserved uh, operator is given by the momentum. And this is a very um, uh, reasonable approach for strongly correlated uh, models. And from this, we can calculate the resistivity, which is given by the inverse of the conductivity, which is given here. And we can perform our perturbative calculation. Uh, so to leading order, the susceptibility is equal to the non-interacting susceptibility, which is given by this expression here. And this susceptibility, of course, has no um, temperature dependence. So the only temperature de dependence will come from the memory matrix itself. OK, so we, we write down all the Feynman diagrams for the memory matrix. So we get all these diagrams here. Um, several integrals, and we have to perform all these integrals, um, and we can calculate the memory matrix. So you don't have to worry about this. Uh, as a result, uh, we obtain that the electroconductivity is given by this expression here. So we have a re residual uh, uh, resistivity, uh, rho naught, here. We have a linear uh, term. Um, uh, in temperature, and also a quadratic term, and also a t to the fourth term. Of course, the t to the fourth term is subleading, so we are going to neg neglect this. And it turns out that H, oh, sorry, uh, uh, A is much larger than B at optimal doping. And this explains why we get the linear um, resistivity of the strange metal phase. And moreover, the scattering rate uh, related to the prefactor here is highly anisotropic and doping dependent, while the scattering rate related to B is completely isotropic. And actually, this agrees with the phenomenology proposed by Nigel Hussey and collaborators. Uh, and uh, one important thing here is that this uh, linear term comes from the contribution of the hotspots in the model. Uh, so if the Fermi surface lacks these uh, special points, then we would have a, uh, this linear contribution. We would obtain that the resistivity would follow a quadratic, uh, um, quadratic in, in the temperature term. So, um, so this is, of course, very interesting. So we can propose a phase diagram from the point of view of, of transport. So the strange metal phase, we get this um, expression here. So we get a linear term, but we also get a, a quadratic term here. And at optimal doping, A is much larger than B. Uh, if you go to very large doping beyond Van Hoff filling, for instance, the hotspots, they cease to exist because there is no intersection of the underlying from the surface uh, with the anti-ferromagnetic uh, zone boundary. And then we would recover a Fermi liquid regime at very high doping. And this is, of course, consistent uh, with experiments. Um, but what happens inside the pseudogap phase? Sorry. So inside the pseudogap phase, the hotspots are gapped out. Uh, so we have either Fermi arcs, like this, or Fermi pockets. So we wouldn't get a linear um, term, linear contribution. In other words, we we must see some kind of Fermi liquid-like transport inside the pseudogap phase. And does this agree with experiments? Um, so we can, I can show you here some works 
where the answer is yes. Um, so here is some spectroscopy evidence for Fermi liquid-like uh, uh, energy and temperature de dependence inside the pseudogap phase of the cuprates. Uh, and these are also related works here. So uh, this is a phase diagram. Uh, so at in the, sorry, uh, here in the strange metal phase, they, they observe this linear resistivity. As you cross the T star uh, pseudogap temperature, there is a regime here, sorry, uh, there is a regime here where they observe a quadratic um, temperature dependence of the resistivity. And this, of course, agrees with our uh, model calculation. Uh, this is also a very interesting result from the group of Taillefer uh, from Canada. And this A here is the prefactor uh, multiplying the linear term in the resistivity. And as you can see here, the A is strongly dope independent, and it flows to zero exactly in the end of the superconducting dome, which is exactly what we showed here. So, uh, yeah, so this, of course, agrees with the, with the experiments. Um, okay, so um, here are my conclusions. So the hotspot model captures many uh, universal aspects of the physics of the cuprates. Uh, based on this theory, a novel bidirectional pair density wave, charge density wave composite order was predicted. And this was subsequently confirmed by state-of-the-art STM experiments performed by the group of Shimus Davies and collaborators. Um, the DC resistivity of the strange battle phase and its crossover to Fermi liquid is captured by, by this model with the addition of weak disorder. And the next step, uh, we can calculate within this framework uh, other uh, transport coefficients um, as a function, for instance, of magnetic field in order to investigate the properties of either the Fermi arcs or the Fermi pockets inside the pseudogap phase and possibly um, um, examine um, the, the, these hypotheses that topology might control the physics inside the pseudogap phase. So this would be a very clear signature from transport um, calculations um, inside the pseudogap phase. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>